Is this the best Pegasus to date? I'll answer that question and more. Let's discuss the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 37. Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas here. Welcome to the channel. Your boy is over 2,000 subscribers, so thank you for that. Now, let's jump into the review. When it comes to looking at like just a, a shoe in general, I look at it from three different perspectives. There's the fit, the performance, and the style. So let's jump into the fit. I went with my true to size 11 and a half. The shoe is a little bit heavy. I couldn't find the exact weight because I don't have a scale here, but I do know that for a men's 10 and a half, it's over 10 ounces. Let's start with the engineer mesh. I thought this was a great change moving away from the fly knit type material, just because I feel like the engineer mesh just does a better job of wicking away moisture as we flow up through the toe box. Now, I found this to be pretty roomy, actually more roomy than usual. Moving up through the overall laces, the laces themselves remain unchanged, but the bands that they're using now as opposed to the Flywire, once again, a key upgrade. For the last like two or three versions, I've been complaining about just not feeling like I could get enough of a secure fit along my forefoot. And so I'm glad that they made that change. The tongue also remains, I don't need a whole lot of tongue in my shoe. And then moving along to the heel collar. And so if you're coming from another brand and try these on, just be aware that you're going to feel a bit more room. Now, let's talk about performance. At the end of the day, the fit's gotta be right, but the performance has to also be stellar. I was pleasantly surprised, and I'm here to tell you, out the box, these was rocking and popping. And one of the key reasons is the React foam. The change over moving to the React foam was not only super key and critical, but also getting rid of that full zoom unit just took away from the shoe feeling like overly firm. And by pressing all of that air into the forefoot, now it helped create a more of a natural motion. The React foam that's in this shoe versus the Infinity Run does feel a bit firmer. I think that actually helps lend itself towards having a somewhat firmer shoe because you can use it across a lot of different ranges. And for me, the outsole, money, they moved away from the more Pentagon type shape, went back to what I feel like is just a more traditional type of waffle type of outsole. It is awesome. I feel like when I ran on wet ground, just the ground, dirt, grass, the track, whatever it was, like there was a great amount of grip. And that for me was important. So moving right along into the type of runs, starting with my everyday type of running type effort. So we're talking about something around like the nine, eight minute type pace type effort. The shoe felt like it had a good amount of structure. I felt like I was able to like maintain form, but if I wanted to get a little bit more loose and more relaxed, and so that moves me right on to, to like my marathon type of effort, the pace that I run for like my longer runs. This shoe also surprised me once again. For these, once I got over like 60 some minutes or so, the shoes felt the same and they felt really good throughout. And because in previous versions, once I got in around the eight, nine, 10 mile range, shoes didn't feel as comfortable. For me, I felt like there was just not enough cushioning in it and so I would wanna to go to something else. The other key for me in terms of understanding like what a shoe's performance does when especially it comes to like longer type marathon type efforts. I'm not even a marathon runner, but what do my feet feel like the next day? What do my legs feel like the next day? And my feet and legs felt really good, minus the, you know, just the usual soreness from a longer run. Now moving right along now, it's like the fart lit kind of tempo type effort. This is actually the area of the shoe that I feel like was the best. When you're doing a fart lick, you're moving from say, you know, like a slower pace, say like eight minutes per mile pace, but then you might jump into like a six minute per mile pace. And you need to do it within a few seconds. This shoe had the right amount of responsiveness and being able to transition back and forth 
between the two things. The last type of workout we have, got the track. This is a heavier training shoe. And so when it came to trying to run, say under a 35 second, 200 meter, or running a 70 second, 400 meter, it was a little bit more of a struggle. It could have also been that I was struggling because I hadn't run on a track uh, in a while. But I did know the difference when I took this shoe off and then went to like my LT Street. There was definitely a clear difference in terms of effort. And so that is the only area where I would say the shoe doesn't perform as well. The other thing is that I think that all of us need to consider when we speak about a shoe that's every day is how does it perform in back-to-back -back efforts? I'm happy to report the shoe performed really well. So I went from like an easy day to a hard track effort to an easy day. And I was like, yo, that for me from a performance standpoint, like they nailed it. Now, style. Listen, Nike gets it. Like they just do, not only from the market in terms of like the touches throughout the shoe, whether it's the ground effects that you, that you seal on the midsole, the placement of the checks, or the swooshes, that for me is a factor in what's going on. At the end of the day, if the shoe doesn't appeal to me from a style point, I don't care how much the performance and the fit there, like if it doesn't appeal to me, it just doesn't appeal to me. What are the natural comparisons to the shoe? The Pegasus 36, this is the version that definitely, there was definitely a changeover. And so if you were unhappy with the 36 and felt like, hey, I wanna see how Nike's improved, on that considerably, this is the version that you transition to. I've reviewed them, I, I think they did well. These 37 for me are just way better. Pegasus Turbo 2, another comparison. That was a shoe that I spent a lot of miles in. I would still pick the Peg 37 over the Peg Turbo 2 um, because the application that I use it for because I use such a wide range of paces that that's gonna deliver for me, as well as the outsole. So now, who's the ideal runner for this? I think it's still the person that wants to maintain the minimum amount of shoes in their rotation. And so if you're newer to running or just looking for an entry point into running, this is the shoe that I continue to recommend because it just gives you the right amount of everything. And if you decide that you want a little bit something more in either direction, you have this as a starting place. And for all my peg lovers out there, like this is another worthy version. When it comes to whether or not I would buy this shoe again, absolutely. So is this the best Pegasus yet? The answer is yes, for all the reasons that I mentioned before. That's gonna do it for me. I will see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.